Today we're mixing up a taste of summer with beautiful berry lemonade concentrates. Hey guys, it's Jara with Wicked Prepared. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be making some beautiful, delicious, and very refreshing berry lemonade concentrates. And I'm going to be canning them so that they'll be shelf stable on our pantry shelves whenever we want to reach for them. I found this recipe floating around on Facebook, but turns out it's the same recipe that's on the Ball canning website, so we know that it's safe and approved. It's a very simple water bath canning recipe, so really anybody could do this. I'd love to take you along and show you how I'm going to do it. Now the ingredients we're going to need are berries. We're going to need six cups of berries. This is strawberries. I've got them already hauled, already cut up, all ready to go. Um, and we're going to need four cups of fresh squeezed lemon juice. I already got that squeezed and then we're going to need six cups of sugar. Yes, that is a lot of sugar, but it's a treat. So we're going to start by blending up the strawberries in the blender. Now I have my Ninja blender here. You could do this in a blender or you could also do this in a food processor. If you have one of those, I do have a food processor, but I'm going to be doing my blender today and I'm doing this in a couple of batches. I've got about half of the strawberries in here and then I'll do the other half. All right, let's let her go. That looks really good. They look really well pureed. Now I think I can just add the rest of the berries right in with these and blend this all up. I'm going to take you in here and show you how this looks just nice smooth pureed berries. So now I've got a stock pot here that I know is going to hold the mixture that we're going to use and I'm just going to pour the berry puree right into the stock pot. Now I'm not sure how much berry puree that this is now but the berries were six cups before they were pureed. That's the measurement that we want. That's the kind of thing that could keep me awake nights wondering. So next I'm going to add in the lemon juice, four cups of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And then finally, we're going to add in our six cups of sugar. And now I'm going to put this on a medium high heat and just start slowly stirring and heating this. Now we don't want this to come to a boil. We're just bringing it up to 190 degrees. We don't want to boil it. Now I do have my instant read thermometer that's always very accurate for me. So I'm going to use this to keep track of the temperature. And I'm going to stir this um, pretty much the whole time because this is not my best pot. This is not a very heavy bottom pot and I really don't want to risk the sugar burning on the bottom. Now over here next to my pot, I do have my water bath canner on the stove and I've got seven pint jars in this canner because we should get about seven, six or seven pints of mixture. And this is just heating and I'm going to have these jars simmering but not boiling and they'll be hot so that when we pour our hot mixture in, we won't have to worry about any kind of thermal shock breaking our jars. Now it says that you can skim the foam at this point, but I don't really think that I have much foam, so I'm probably not even going to bother skimming it. That looks pretty good. So now I'm just gonna get my hot jars out of the canner and I've got my jar lifter here. And I'm just going to dump that hot water right back into the canner for each jar. And then I've got a towel laid out here on my counter to protect my counter and this is where we're going to work filling our jars. Alright, so we've got our hot concentrate, we've got our hot jars and now we're going to get them filled and get them back in the hot canner. Alright, so I've got my canning funnel that I'm going to use to get everything into the jar without making a mess. And then I also have my headspace tool. This is going to measure, you can see right here, it measures a quarter inch, a half an inch, three quarters, and an inch. Now what we want for headspace in this recipe is just a quarter inch. So we just want that first little notch. Now you can see here that a quarter inch of headspace really is not very much space. See how close that is to the tops. Now I actually only got five pints out of this. I have a little bit left in my pot but it's not enough to fill another jar, so we'll probably just use that to have a taste test. So now I've just got a damp paper towel, and this is just water, no vinegar this time, because there's nothing in here that would have any kind of oils or fats, so I think that water will be sufficient to clean these. 
We're just cleaning off the rim of the jar to make sure that there's nothing that's going to interfere with the seal because I may have made a mess when I was filling my jars. Everything's cleaned off and I've got my clean lids and I've got rings so we're going to get these going. All right, so you can see here that I've got my rack up um, on the edges of my canner so that I can get my jars in there easily. I'm gonna use my jar lifter again. Look at how beautiful that is. All right, so let's just get this lowered down. Now we just need to make sure that the water is at least one to two inches above the top of the canning jars, which it definitely is. So I'm gonna turn this on high. I'm gonna put the lid on it, and then we're gonna bring this up to a good boil. All right, so that's our timer. Our time's up. That was 15 minutes in the water bath. So I'm gonna turn off the burner. I'm gonna get the lid off this pot, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my jar lifter to get these um, jars out onto a towel to cool. All right guys, just look at how beautiful those jars are. Aren't those gorgeous? And these have to sit here and cool and seal up for 24 hours and then they'll be ready to go on the shelf. And next I'm going to try some raspberry lemonade concentrate. Okay, so the next flavor of concentrate that I'm going to make is going to be raspberry. Now we're using the same ingredients. We're going to use six cups of the fruit and four cups of the fresh squeezed lemon juice and six cups of sugar. But I only had four cups of the raspberries. I used one of my quart mason jars to measure because I'm running out of measuring uh, vessels. So I only have four cups of the raspberries. So what I'm going to try doing is I'm going to try making up the difference with some freeze dried raspberries. Now if I had extra strawberries, I would have thrown those in and done a strawberry raspberry, but I used every bit of my strawberries in the strawberry lemonade concentrate, so we're gonna do pure raspberries. You could use frozen if you didn't have um, enough fresh, you could use frozen. I'm gonna try freeze dried and we'll see how that works. So we're gonna start the same way. We're gonna start by pureeing our fruit. Now I didn't even clean out the blender after the strawberries because honestly, a little bit of strawberry in with our raspberries is not gonna hurt anything. So that's just gonna save me a step save a little water, it'll be fine. I did wash the raspberries, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these into the blender. This is the four cups of fresh raspberries. So now we definitely have a nice smooth puree, just like we did with the strawberries. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna measure out some of our freeze-dried raspberries, and these I'm going to puree in my Ninja Blender. Now, I think yesterday I might have lost the little um, gasket ring in here, and so I'm hoping where this isn't a liquid it will be okay, but I've got to order a new gasket for this. So we'll see how this goes. Oh my goodness. One of the kids must have been having a snack and left this in there. All right, so we're gonna put this on the Ninja and we're gonna powder this. Now, if you saw the episode where I made the um, dark chocolate raspberry cocoa bombs, it's very similar to what I did there. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna sift this powder and get the seeds out of it. Now, I did not sift out the seeds with the strawberry puree because the strawberry seeds are small enough that they're not gonna bother anybody. But some people don't like to eat raspberry seeds or drink raspberry seeds, and some people actually can't because of you know medical reasons. So, and I'm gonna sift this powder first before I sift the liquid because otherwise if this gets wet, I won't be able to sift the powder. Okay, so now that I've got all this powder in here, I'm just gonna rub it against the mesh with some sort of a utensil. This spoon will work, but anything would work really and we're gonna sift all the powder through and leave the seeds behind. You can see all that powder going through in the bottom. All right, at this point, I don't think any more powder is going through, which means that what we have left here is just the seeds that we sifted out. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna add just enough water into this um, raspberry powder to make it the same consistency as the puree that we have, because that's what we're going for. We're trying to make the same uh, raspberry, fresh raspberry puree, puree out of our 
freeze dried raspberries. Now I've put the water into the bottle from the Ninja Blender just because there was still some raspberry powder left in this. You can see how it almost made like a raspberry juice and I wanna get as much of this raspberry goodness as we can get into our mixture. Now I could just as easily have reconstituted these raspberries with water and then blended them the way that I did these. But just having worked with these before, I knew how easy it was going to be to sift out the seeds when they were powdered. And I am not really sure how easy it's gonna to be to sift the seeds out of this. So I figured I would do it this way because I knew I'd be able to get the seeds out easily. Now, if I had left this raspberry powder dry, it would have absorbed a lot of the water, a lot of the liquid in our mixture as we cook it up. And that's not what we want. We want this to be have the same moisture content that it would have if we had used 100% fresh berries. So I'm just adding back the moisture that was removed from these freeze dried raspberries. Now I think that this is pretty good. This looks like it's probably about the same consistency as the puree that I have in here. So I think we're gonna go with this. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna attempt the same process with the fresh raspberry puree that we did with the freeze dried, except this is going to be a wet mixture. So we're gonna try to press that through here and get all of the seeds out. Okay, let's give this a try. Now the ladle is the way to do this. I'm starting to see it coming through the bottom. I saw this on some sort of a TV show. But you can see it's going through. Can you see? It's going through, it's just going slowly. Okay, I will say this is much easier with the freeze-dried raspberries, number one. Number two, I think if I had a strainer, like the type of food strainer, food mill, like you would use to process um, tomatoes and remove the seeds and the skin from tomatoes, I think that might work a lot better here. But we are getting it done, so. All right, guys, I think that is about as much as we are going to get out of there. If you look, most of what's left in there is just the raspberry seed pulp and we've got mostly puree down in the bowl below but i really wanted to point out to you right, look at the difference in these two purees look at how rich and dark this was the freeze-dried raspberries and this was the fresh raspberries and i tell you what knowing what i know about freeze-dried food i know that these were grocery store raspberries these were definitely not fresh it's not raspberry season here in maine yet and who knows how long since these had been picked i know with the freeze-dried raspberries they process these within you know a few hours of them being picked and so these actually are probably far superior to these and you can really see the difference in these two purees so i'm really glad that i actually had to, had to substitute some of the freeze dried all right so now we're just going to be doing exactly what we did with the last one we're going to put in our fruit fruit purees And next we're going to put in our four cups of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And finally we're going to put in our six cups of sugar. Now I know that seems like a lot of sugar, but don't be tempted to cut down on that. Now this is, this is going to end up being probably about six gallons of lemonade once it's reconstituted. So that really spreads it out. And another thing is that because this recipe is high in acid from the lemon juice and the fruit and high in sugar, that's what makes it safe to water bath can. Those two things act as preservatives. So we don't really want to mess with those amounts too much. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the burner and I'm going to get it going. And once again, we're going to bring this up to 190 degrees and I'm going to stir this pretty regularly. Now I am seeing the occasional small lemon seed in here. Those escaped um, the holes in my, in my lemon juicer, but they stick out like a sore thumb so I can easily pull them right out. Last time I noticed them when I was pouring the lemon juice in and I was able to catch them. This time I missed them, but I can get them now. <laughs> all right i don't know if you can see that or not but it looks like we are there we're at 190. so i'm going to get this off the heat okay so once again same situation as before 
I've got my jars all hot in the canner behind me. I'm gonna get those out here on the counter and we're gonna go ahead and fill them up. All right, so I've got my hot jars out of the canner and I'm ready to fill them. Now it's important to have those jars simmering in the canner for a couple of reasons, because we're putting the hot liquid into the jars. We don't want to shock them if they were cold and have them break. And the other reason is by having them in simmering water, we know that these jars are gonna be sterile and completely germ-free. Once again, we're filling to within a quarter inch headspace. Now, once again, I only got five jars and this time I didn't even have any left over like I did last time. So the recipe says you get seven jars. Um, not sure why I'm getting less, but it is what it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and wipe these rims really well and get them, get the lids on them and then get them in the canner for 15 minutes. Now, just like the other jars, um, I really didn't think there was enough foam to worry about skimming it off. All right, so these are all ready now to go in the canner, which you can probably hear simmering behind me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them in and we're gonna water bath these for 15 minutes, just like the other ones. Okay guys, so that ended up giving us five pints of each flavor. So I've got 10 pints of lemonade concentrate here, five of the strawberry and five of the raspberry. That is amazing. Now to mix these up, what you do is you just mix one jar of the concentrate with three jars of water. So each one of these pints is going to make four pints or two quarts of lemonade, which is a half a gallon. So all together we have basically made five gallons of lemonade here, which is pretty awesome. And just look at how beautiful these are. Wouldn't these make a wonderful gift as well? These would make a great hostess gift. These would make a great addition to a gift basket if you like to put together homemade gift baskets at Christmas time or any time really. These would be beautiful gifts. Anyone would be so happy to receive these. So now let's go ahead and see how these mix up. We've got raspberry over here and strawberry over here. We're gonna do one jar of concentrate and then three jars of water. And now for the strawberry. Okay, it's a super hot day outside, so let's take these pictures outside and see if we can find anybody who wants to drink them. There is some gardening being done today. You want your lemonade? Sure. Mm. That's good. Good? Good job. Mm. That is good. And here come the hoodlums. They've been swimming. They're going to want some lemonade. Hey guys. Okay, who wants lemonade? You guys want strawberry or raspberry? Strawberry. 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 Extra. I think these guys want some lemonade. Mm. What do you think, guys? That's good. good. This is so you good. like it? Is that good, Haze? Well guys, the lemonades were a total hit. Everyone who tried them absolutely loved them. This was a really simple canning project. In fact, I think this would be a great canning project for a beginner. The hardest part of making these lemonade concentrates was actually juicing the lemons. I'm definitely going to be in the market for a new citrus juicer. I have this citrus juicer and I really like this, but the problem is I started buying lemons in the big bulk bags because it was cheaper and those lemons are really huge, the lemons that come in those bags. And so I had to resort to using this because um, that little lemon squeezer wasn't working on those really big lemons. 
they were too big for the squeezer. So that squeezer absolutely was not working. It clogs up. It took me forever to squeeze the lemons. So if you have a citrus juicer that you really like that works really well, let me know down in the comments what you have because I'm in definitely in the market for a new one. Because I'm planning to make a lot more of these concentrates. I really enjoyed these. These were really delicious. I'm going to be trying some different flavors. I'm going to be making a rhubarb lemonade concentrate coming up here next. So make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that or anything else that we have coming up. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave me a strawberry emoji down in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jara with Wicked Prepared. Survive today, thrive tomorrow. We'll see you next time.